Pennsylvania Congressman Tim Murphy serves on the House Energy, uh, on the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. And sir, welcome back to America's Newsroom. Great to be with you. Can Thank you, you. Can you make sense of this? No, I can't. You know, when the stimulus bill went through, I actually offered an, a couple amendments. One to make sure that steel purchased through this would be bought in America, and that was accepted. But another one I offered in the Rules Committee to say, when we're looking at all these other purchases that the government was going to be making, automobiles, computers, materials, I thought, well, if this is for American jobs, let's put up or shut up and say that other things had to be bought in America, too. The Rules Committee never permitted my amendment to make it to the floor, and now we're seeing the outcome of this. Well, and this We've particular example, I want the viewers to understand this. They say they could not find a facility in the U.S. that was capable of doing the work to make these cars. But isn't, if you want the money to be intended in the rightful way, don't you want to go toward a facility within the United States that can achieve that? Why, why sure, are you going to Helsinki? Yeah, the stimulus bill was supposed to help American jobs, stimulate our economy. If the, pur if the purpose of the bill was to build electric cars somewhere in the world, I suppose that that's what was done. But let's be transparent about this. Clearly, uh, that's not what happened. And the goal became to make these and make them anywhere. And that is a huge violation of what was told the American people in the stimulus bill, another reason why a lot of us didn't vote for it. On Solyndra, and people are going to draw comparisons. Are there comparisons with this one or not? Yeah, the comparisons are this, that basically the stimulus bill became an earmark bill. And keep this in mind, when the president was touting this bill in February of 2009, he said, I think this was an ABC News interview, he said, if you take a look at this bill, the fact is there are no earmarks in this bill, which, by the way, some critics can't claim for legislation they voted for even the last eight years. In other words... He was criticizing Congress for uh, putting favorites in with regard to money, but saying he wasn't going to do that. Now, when you follow the dots, it's pretty clear that these are going closer and closer to the White House and saying that um, with a list of investors going to Rahm Emanuel and someone in the White House, when profiles of Kaiser and other investors going to the White House, why did they need to know this? Well, it appears, and we're getting closer to finding out, that the whole purpose was to perhaps protect some people or get money back to people, perhaps some of them donors, or uh, work this as a presidential earmark and close all the doors with us finding out why this was well, done. Well, what you want now is more documentation from the White House and other places. And the White yeah, House is but saying we've given you 900 pages of communications. Energy Department says you have 70,000 pages of documents. Ultimately, the president has a BlackBerry. And you remember well, this, this was a major point of contention when he told his staff that he wanted to have it when he became president. Now, is it well, the BlackBerry yeah. emails that you want? Well, we like a lot of this. The president touted on his very first day in office at his very first press conference that he was going to have the most open and transparent administration ever, criticized previous administrations, said that every one of his political appointees was going to have to sign a pledge to be transparent. And he said the mere fact that you had the legal power to keep something secret does not mean you should always use it. The Freedom of Information Act is perhaps the most powerful instrument we have for making our government honest and transparent and holding accountable. And I expect members of my administration not simply to live up to the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And he said he himself would do that. So you say now he's it appears, on that point. Absolutely. It's absolute opposite of what he said. Now, my point is this. If you have nothing to hide, then why hide it? Not only is the administration saying we're not going to send you our communications, but also when we try to speak with the uh, legislative, with the council uh -huh. for the Department of Energy, who wrote this contract which flipped the way the uh, taxpayers would get their money back they're saying we're we'll talking to you but we don't want it on record not taking the oath well, ultimately well, that's not the may, way we do things uh, ultimately you make an executive privilege on this and, and it may not ever become available to you but we will see how far you go uh tim murphy thank you for thank your you. time coming back in here we'll watch it okay thank you for thank your you thank you all right Alex